Welcome to Chef DTV, where we're here at Great Lakes Brewery for Project X. Now, Project X is a great experiment where once a month, Peter and his crew make a new beer. And tonight, everybody's going to try my beer, which is a beer. Our beer. beer. Our beer. <laughs> right, right, Thank sorry. <laughs> to what we believe to be number nine, Project X. We've paired with Chef Daryl from Aquastar. He's prepared a lot of great food for us. This month we've got a special treat. Chef actually came down and uh, him and I made a beer together called Chef DMP Brewberry Wheat Lager. Peter, thanks for letting us come in and I can hardly wait to brew my own beer. Well, beer's come such a long way that it's so flavorful, comparably speaking to what we used to drink. And that's all because of people like you, the craft brewers. Yeah. And explain to me what a craft brewer is. Well first, just to your bottle note, what we really tried to do, and this is really a good note of craft brewing, is get that beer out of the bottle. Yeah. Get it into a glass, let it breathe, smell it, look at it, really enjoy it. It's not you know, a dark bottle that you keep secret and oh, you put down. No, you wanna, you wanna let everybody see what you're drinking. And craft brewing is just like that. It's a real expression of emotion, passion, mm -hmm. feeling, and what craft brewing allows you to do, because our batches are much smaller than, than major breweries, is we can play a lot with different raw materials, ingredients, fruits, vegetables, spices, just have a lot of fun with it. We've been brewing beer since 1987, so we know what we're doing around here. Cool. And in the uh, last few years, we've been having a lot of fun playing around with seasonals and specialty ales. With this Project X, we created this pilot system so we could brew 60 liter batches. So in our conversation, we said, we've never done blueberry here, so let's, let's try a blueberry wheat Lager. Basic beer making is very similar to making coffee. So you got water, you have crushed malt, the two row malt, it's a base for a majority of beers. So we did a split 50 50, 17 pounds of two row and 17 pounds of malted wheat. You stir it up and let it steep. And what happens there is all the starches are converting to sugar. And what we're actually producing at this point is not beer, it's called wort. And wort is a really sweet, grainy liquid that once you ferment, the yeast eats it, excretes alcohol and CO2. So much it goes in for just 60 liters. It just it blew my mind on because I thought it would be a lot less than that. It takes a lot of malt to make beer, and uh, and it starts with a lot of water because what happens is that malt is very dry and it'll absorb a lot of water. And you're going to be surprised again. We're going to we're going to sparge, which is basically like in the coffee machine. You're spraying on the top uh, another 40 liters of, of water. So our total water is going to be 90, but we're only at between 40 and 50 up. Wow. A lot of it evaporates during boil. And you can actually boil longer if you want your beer to be stronger. So now, when do we add the blueberries? We put some blueberries in the mash. We put a pound and a quarter of dry blueberries and two pounds of the fresh frozen blueberries. Uh, like I said, we haven't made beer with blueberries before, so we're kind of experimenting here today as well. And we fired up the heat, and then we'll actually use a gravity flow, and we'll start transferring over to the kettle. And once we get up to the boil, we're going to add our first hop. What we decided to use, which is traditional for wheat beers, is the hop called Sass. And we don't want it to be too bitter, but we want it to have give some nice body and flavor and balance to the, to the whole brew. Um, so we're going to put the hops in at different stages. We're going to put a little bit of hops right at the beginning, because that'll be your bitterness. We're going to put a medium amount in the middle, because then that'll give you a little bit of bitterness and a lot of aroma. And then we put uh, another, say, two-thirds more right at the end. And what that does is it's all for aroma, and you shouldn't get too much bitterness from that. So now we've boiled. Right. We're almost ready to cool this beer. And you need to cool it because when you put the yeast in, you don't want to kill it. Because yeast is a living, breathing organism. And depending on the temperature you cool is also for the style of beer. So for lagers, traditionally you cool from 7 to 12 degrees. And for ales, you could go 12 up to 20, 22. So you've got ales which are generally more flavorful, more robust, darker, a little more hearty. Uh, again, served with uh, darker foods, it pairs well that way. Lagers compared to like white wine, so you've got very light, refreshing, uh, very carbonated, very easy drinking. So lager would be more like your summer type beer, where ales can kind of fill in your winter robust beers. It, it, it can be, but again, you know, brewers are pushing the limits and changing sort of the way tradition had sort of earmarked styles and brands, and now it's anything goes now. And what Great Lakes has been very well known with is our portfolio of seasonals. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got our, from, from fall, we've got our pumpkin ale, and our winter ale, and our orange peel is coming out in spring this year, and our green tea ale, which is a very light, refreshing, tea-flavored ale. Wheat beer is traditionally an ale, but we're kind of doing a lager twist to it. So we're, we're probably going to try to cool in at about 15. 
So when you put the yeast in, do you have a, a certain amount that you put in? We have done a few pilot brews like this, so we have kind of a rule of thumb, a couple of pitchers, it's not too scientific there. You can over pitch, but it's hard, but you can definitely under pitch, and you don't want to do that because then you'll have a real sluggish start and some off flavors can start to be produced if you don't get that yeast activated right away. It takes um, four and a half to five hours to make a brew, no matter what size it is. Now, from adding the yeast to putting it in the bottle, uh, guys, I'll give it about two weeks. So, Chef, I prepared some food tonight with the beer. You maybe want to explain, Chef? The, uh... So, I was trying to think for the last three days of kind of where we're going to go with this and, and how it's going to turn out. So, what I've done is I've made some mini pancakes made with our beer, and I didn't get to taste the beer until today, actually. So, it was really cool that it, it worked out so well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, it's really neat. And what's going to be served over is a little bit of crab and mascarpone cheese and it has a hint of mustard and chipotle pepper in it, so it brings all the flavors together. So I'm really, it'll be neat to see when we actually drink the beer and, and eat at the same time. Yeah, and that's why we, we held off on the second course tonight, it was just so you could actually get a chance to try to pair them up together. Cool, are we ready to tap it? I think we're ready I'm, to I'm really tap eager, I'm really <laughs> eager. <laughs> you got your glass yet? So cheers. Cheers. That, you know, I was a little bit nervous coming in today when I knew there's going to be lots of people out there Almost waiting, 70. waiting to try this beer, and it and it tastes amazing. As a chef, you kind of want to let the food do the talking, you know? Absolutely. And that's kind of what I was thinking about. Same Is, with the chef of beer. Exactly. Beer exactly. Exactly. So here's to great eating and Cheers. drinking. <laughs>